To get started with your TI-84, the very first thing that you wanna do is to turn it on. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this button and I'm gonna take you through all the things that you need. Let's go ahead and start with just the lower half of the calculator. This is just like a regular calculator. In these keys here, I can go ahead and do some addition like six plus three enter is your equal sign. I can also do some more complex operations using the parentheses up above the numbers eight and nine and this little negative here at the bottom. The calculator's super picky. If I'm gonna put a negative number first, I'm gonna use the little negative down below, but if I'm subtracting, I wanna use the subtraction symbol. So let's go ahead and subtract in parentheses three times nine, and then close our parentheses. Now I really didn't need my parentheses there because your calculator is a master of order of operations. Let's do something else with, let's say, an exponent. So if I want to do an exponent, say I want to square something, I can use my squared button, which is in this very first column about halfway down. So I typed the number six in first, and then I'm going to hit my squared button and then enter. I can also use the caret key, which is in this far right-hand column, right above the division key. So say I wanted to do six cubed, I could do six, and then my caret, and then a three. Now what I'm showing you here is gonna work on any of the TI-84 calculators. Whether you've got a TI-84 plus silver edition, a TI-84 plus, a TI-84 with one of the C's, which stands for color, um, all of these really just vary based on whether or not they've got color and how much memory they have. All of the things I'm showing you here today are gonna to work for all of them. It's also really easy to recall one of your previous inputs. I'm gonna use my up arrow, and as I use my up arrow here, I can go through all of my inputs. Now, if your version of the 84 doesn't do this, you can also do second, followed by the enter key. Notice that there's a blue entry up above there. If I do second, followed by entry, I can bring up my last operations. Now, instead, I wanna clear what I've got here. My calculator does allow me to use the up arrow. I can use the up arrow until I'm at whatever value I want and then hit enter. I can even back arrow and change. Say I wanted the subtraction to be instead a plus and then I can go ahead and hit enter. Now if I wanted to build on this, the calculator automatically stores whatever your last answer is in a value called ANS. So say from right here, I hit the plus button and I wanted to do that previous answer plus six, I get 30. Let's say that now I wanted to do 50 minus 30. I've got a couple of options. I can do um, my up arrow to grab that value of 30, or instead, let me delete this. I'm just hitting my delete button up there towards the top. Instead, I can also grab answer, which is where it stored that last value by using my second key and then answer, and then I can go ahead and hit enter. Next, let's make sure that your calculator is set up for all of the proper defaults. To do that, we're gonna go into the mode button, which is up here near the top row. I'm gonna go ahead and hit mode. And then from mode, I really want yours to be selected just like mine are. For the most part, that means that you've got everything selected that's on the left-hand side. If it wasn't, let's say that instead of radians here, you had degrees selected. You just wanna navigate using your arrow buttons so that you're on radians, notice how it's blinking, and then if you hit enter, it's gonna change that to be selected. As we go through, there's not a lot of things that you really need to change here. You definitely want it in normal print and not scientific. This float one is set to give you as many decimals as it can, usually it's up to about 12, or you could set the rounding so that it gives you a fixed number of decimals. I always tell my students to have it set on float. We also wanna leave it in function. This is really helpful for graphing. And there's some other options that you can do here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave everything else as is. 
Now I wanna get back to that home screen so that I can do some calculations. To do that, we wanna quit here. Quit is the blue above mode. So I wanna do second followed by mode, and this gets me to my home screen. If I wanted to clear what I had on this home screen, I can use my clear button over here in the right hand column, and I can just go ahead and hit clear. Now there are some other operations that you would find on a scientific calculator. You've got your trig functions, which are here in the middle of your keypad, and then you also have some logarithms over here along the left hand side. So if I wanted to do a logarithm, I could do log and then say log of five and then enter. I could also do the natural log, but you'll notice that what it doesn't have is log of a different base. Log is our common logarithm, which is base 10, and ln is our natural logarithm, which is base e. Now we can find other operations that don't live on the keypad in the math menu, but there's also a nice quick menu. So you'll notice that I've got some function keys, F1, F2 through F5 up in those upper buttons. I'm gonna quit out of my math menu and do second quit. Let's take a look at what's in those function buttons. To get to them because they're in green, I'm gonna go ahead and type alpha first and then F1. And you'll notice that it's given you a sub menu as well. This very first menu gives you fraction values. If I go ahead and choose one here just by hitting enter, it gives me that nice fraction print. So I can go nine, let's do like nine fifteenths. And then if I hit enter, it gives me that reduced fraction, which is super, super nice. If I wanted to convert that to a decimal, I can go back up to my F1. So I'm gonna go alpha F1. Remember it saved that three fifths into ANS. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose this convert to decimal. So I'm gonna arrow down here, convert to decimal. And now it's saying answer, convert to fraction, convert to decimal. And if I hit enter, it's gonna give that to me as a 0.6. If I go back to alpha and then F1, notice it gave me fraction, function, matrix, and Y variables. This is actually F1, F2, F3, and F4, and I can get there by using my right arrow. Now under function, there are some really nice commonly used functions from that math menu, including a log with a base option. Let's go ahead and choose this one. Now I just arrowed down to number five, but you could also hit number number five from here and then enter. It gives me the option of a base. Let's do a base five on our logarithm of five. This should be one and sure enough that answer is equal to one. Going back to those function values and I'm just gonna do F1 and then arrow over, you've got lots of different options depending on what you are working on. Let's do some more exploring with the functions that we see there in blue. To get to those, I'm gonna use my second key and let's do a square root. So if I wanted to do the square root of say nine and then enter, I can use my square root key here. I can also do powers of values. Let's do a 10 to the, which I've got right here. So 10 to the, we'll just do 10 squared, which is equal to 100. And I also have my value of pi over here on the right hand side. So if I do second followed by pi, I end up with my 3.14. Now the 84s do have an automatic shutoff, but you might want to turn it off on your own. And to do that, you're going to hit the second button followed by off. Now you should probably subscribe because the TI-84 does so much more, including graphing.